Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to check out a crossover event that has Venom in it, uh, but it's not really a full Venom story. He's not in it till the third issue, but it is a crossover event uh, with Miss Marvel where she crossed over with Wolverine in the first issue um, and then Moon Knight in the second issue and then Venom in the third issue. So these were just a couple of one shots. Jody Hauser was the writer, a couple different artists on the book, um, including Zay Carlos and also Abram uh, Robertson. And I forget the name of the artist on Venom. I kind of liked his artwork, Dave Wachter, um, or Wachter, maybe. Um, so yeah, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. But actually, the art is good. Uh, I really, I kind of like the first two issues, Wolverine and uh, Moon Knight, a little bit more because I felt like those artists maybe had more of a vibe of the monthly books. But then again, when I got to Dave's artwork on the last one, I was like, well, I better go flip through the current Venom book. Yeah, I know it's Brian Hitch, but like, I want to see if this has that vibe. And after I just flipped through a couple pages of, of the first trade paperback, I'm like, okay, this feels a little bit like it's said in that. So I, I like that. I don't know who, con if there was a conscious effort to find artists that kind of reflect current styles that are in the Moon Knight book and in the you know X-Men books and in Venom. But if that was, it was really well done. And actually, Jody Hauser's scripts on these, I thought were pretty strong. I, you know, Miss Marvel is not a character I know a ton about. And I watched the show recently, and I liked it overall. Uh, but I pretty much liked the first issue or first episode issue and the last episode. Uh, the first episode I liked a lot. And then some of the stuff I liked in the first episode, they didn't really do much in the you know other episodes to kind of keep it consistent and you know have a vo like a single voice on it. And I think that's because there was different directors on it and whereas like Moon Knight had different directors on one or two episodes you could tell but overall it felt closer knit and WandaVision I think and Loki had one director and that's why those felt consistent at least to me um but this like the, the Miss Marvel show I kind of was like ah, I like three of the episodes and the other three I didn't really care about um so but I still like the kind of what they brought to the character and I thought the girl who played Miss Marvel was awesome I thought she did a really good job she reminded me like of a Peter Parker type so that's kind of now I hear her voice when I'm reading this story, like I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just kind of putting that girl's voice into this version of Miss Marvel, and uh, and it kind of made it a little bit more fun because <laughs> because uh, the dialogue is actually pretty good. She's um she's a neat character. I gotta say, she's like an inhuman, but she's you know has some mutant abilities or, or like a connection. Um, and then she's helping out in the first book. She's going to like this tree where she's like hangs out. It's like an X Men. You know, I don't know a ton about like after House of X. And, uh, and Powers of Ten, or Powers of X. After those, I've only kind of briefly picked up a, a, an issue here or there of X-Men, but I overall have not liked the Hickman era and, and you know everyone who's been writing with Hickman. I've not really enjoyed any of that, to be honest with you. And this book, it continued that, but luckily it was just the first issue and they got through it really quickly. But it had Miss Marvel you know, in New York around this giant tree where the X-Men have like a hideout. And uh, and then it gets attacked by these robot bugs and she's there and she sees Wolverine and she wants to go say something to him because she's like, hey, we teamed up before. But then when they have an interaction, he's kind of gruff and shoos her away. And she's like, what the heck, man? Uh, and then she also when Cyclops shows up, she's like, oh, I used to be on a team with Cyclops, although it was a a, uh, a different version of Cyclops who was younger from the past. And so there was like an, a, an interaction with them. And so I like that Jody, you know, paid attention to a lot of the lore uh, from the books, not even just in recent years, like she was throwing, uh, you know, nods to older stuff that happened with like X-Men and Avengers and other characters in the Marvel Universe. And I kind of dug that even Moon Knight, like she referenced some of the current stuff, but she also threw in a reference or two to some older stuff as well. So I, I overall, I like that. I think Jody really knocked it out of the park with this because it was a fun event. It was just one of those things where I'm like, OK, this is three issues and it's in and out story wise. Um, I'm, there's a little cliffhanger because they never really catch the bad guy. Uh, so that still is a thread that's probably going to come back later on that Jody will probably, uh, you know, write in some other book. Uh, but for this, though, it, you get a nice story, but you also get a good Miss Marvel story as far as, like, someone who's a little bit of an outsider to her. She's got a good head on her shoulders. She's a good kid, you know. She, like, it reminds me of Peter Parker. She's got these powers. She's trying to do the best she can with them. She puts people first, so she's always trying to protect people whenever these robot bugs show up. It, you know, when Wolverine and other characters are going berserk, you know, she's, you know, doing crowd control and trying to help people. Uh, same with when Moon Knight shows up, and then also, uh, but Moon Knight is a little bit more aware than, uh, than like, Wolverine was about other people in danger. Not that Wolverine totally neglected people, it was just, you know, he gets 
he gets uh, uh, emotional <laughs> in battle. Um, but he didn't really put anyone in danger, but you just had Miss Marvel just kind of just in case, going like, hey, everyone, back up, get away. And then the X-Men show up, and they're like, all right, everyone, we're closed for the day, get out of here. And uh, they kind of drive everyone away as more bugs show up. So the first issue, that's pretty much what it is. And here's some of uh, Z. Carlos's artwork, which I really dug. Um, it's just so That's when the first bug arrived. And then you got some X-Men showing up here. So yeah, I, I dug this first issue. It was a good setup. And you're like, all right, who's who's the bad guy? What's going on? You know, And they have a cool... Other mutants show up. It's not just Cyclops and Rogue and Storm and Jean Grey and Wolverine, but you also get like Armor and, and M show up, uh, who is Penance also. Like they, you know, continued that story on from the Generation X comic books. So like I said, there's a lot of history in these that Jody kind of pays attention to, and I appreciated that. As a, as a, as a fan of uh, X-Men from years and years back, I didn't feel too lost. I still don't like the Krakoa thing and them coming through trees and teleporting and basically telling the world hey we can cure your diseases you just got to give us whatever the hell we want it's kind of like uh, i don't know it doesn't seem very x-men to me i never really liked hickman's approach to them um i liked his other stuff fantastic four and even some of his avenger stuff but definitely not his x-men stuff not for me um so we get a hint at who the villain is and we'll find you know find out in the uh, second issue which is the moon knight one you get to see um a guy wearing like a uh, i don't know like a peacock armor or something um he's uh right here in the green I actually don't know if I know this character. I think his name is Zeno, uh, maybe, uh, X-E-N-O. Uh, and so don't really know who that character is. <laughs> so uh, his reveal didn't really mean much to me, but maybe it did to some of you. So if you know more about him and you want to share, let me know down in the comments. But this artwork I liked because it, it feels very close to the current Moon Knight book. Not exact, but it just tone-wise and color-wise, I thought they did a good job. But then she's like, okay, now I got to go team up with, or I'm following these robots and one of the signals leads me to this part of town, which is protected by Moon Knight or Mr. Knight uh, with the Midnight Mission, which we talked about recently in, uh, in one of my um, Seek and Destroy episodes. So, uh, so yeah, so she's like, okay, let's go to Moon Knight, let's talk to him, and let's try to recruit him for this mission and see if he can help us find, you know, this next batch of robots. And they do, and it turns out it's a trap to lure Moon Knight in because uh, they're targeting, these robots are, turns out they're targeting certain people with certain powers. So Wolverine, they got a little bit of his healing factor. Uh, a couple of them got into the tree, the Krakoa tree in New York and extracted some DNA from different mutants there, including armor. Um, so all that is going to play out in the third issue when uh, that DNA starts getting used to create things. And basically this Zeno guy is looking for an immortality thing. He's, he wants to live forever and he's promising people, um, you know, this guy who built these robot uh, bugs, he had a, a terminal illness. So Zeno was like, look, if you build me these bugs and we extract some of this stuff, I can give you something that will make you immortal. And so that's kind of how he gets people to work for him as he's promising them immortality. And he's trying his best to stay off the radar. But Miss Marvel is being a young kid who's like, like I said, got a good you know, head on her shoulders. And she's uh, she's really committed to this case. She's like, no, we're going to solve this. We're going to figure this out. So um, so, yeah, so she really locks into this. And, and I like that a lot. But she's teaming up with characters like uh, Wolverine, who's kind of gruff. She's teamed up with him before. He was one of her first team-ups, actually, and I think Jody references that in the first book. Um, but Moon Knight, she's never really met before, uh, and so she's like, yeah, this guy's got a weird reputation. And after hanging out with him for a little bit, she kind of sees, okay, yeah, he's a little he's a little different. Uh, but they also bring in the current book. They bring in Hunter's Moon. So you actually get a team-up with uh, Hunter's Moon, Moon Knight, and Miss Marvel all attacking the bugs who have now combined together to make a giant robot bug thing. Um, so only way to fight that, you need a giant yourself maybe. So they summon a little bit of the power of Conchu and you get a little bit of a, a Conchu, giant Conchu battle against the robot. <laughs> so yeah, it was cool. Um, I, I, I like this issue though, but it, I'm really loving the current Moon Knight book. And I get a little protective when I like a book because then I don't want it to cross over because then other writers will put their voice on the character and it doesn't seem like it fits. But Jody, you nailed it. Like, uh, you know, if, if Jed McKay is ever, you know, uh, gets behind on something or does a crossover event or something with Moon Knight and other characters, I hope you co-write it with them because I thought your voice for Moon Knight in this was great. And with uh, Hunter's Moon, it seemed like you really understood who those characters were um, and then did a great job writing them in that issue. Um, and then the final one, this is the whole point of the Venom vlog, is we actually get a story here with Dylan Brock. So the last Venom book I reviewed that was current um, I think was issue 200 and it was like right after King and Black 
and Dylan was given the symbiote and Eddie went to space to become the king in black, right? So that's the last I've read. I don't know any of what's going on right now with Al Ewing. Um, I've, I mean, I know a couple things like Mer with Meridius and stuff because I read the Thor issues, but I'm going to dive into that more coming up soon. So I thought I was going to be lost in this one, and I thought it was going to be Eddie, King, and Black showing up to team up with Miss Marvel, but it's not. It's actually Dylan. Yeah, they actually tell a Dylan story. So I'm like, oh, cool. I don't really, ha I don't need to have read really anything because I know Dylan is Venom on, you know, on the streets of New York and stuff. So this is great. Although, uh, no, he still has his chain with him. <laughs> you know, I'm not a big fan of that design. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's cool because I'm like, all right, I all you need to know in this is that Dylan is Venom. Um, but the, some of the dialogue, I will say, feels very Eddie, like 90s Eddie. So I don't know if that's just the symbiote having that personality, you know, because it was bonded with Eddie during that time and it's just coming out in Dylan or if Dylan's just a lot more like his dad <laughs> with bad jokes and bad 90s references than I thought. He doesn't really make a ton of references, but I just mean like his 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 cadence and the way he talks and, and the types of threats he makes. Like, I want to taste your insides and stuff. I'm like, yeah, that that feels very, you know, I guess Eddie Venom. But then again, pretty much most people who had the symbiote said something along those lines at some point while wearing the symbiote, maybe with the exception of Spider-Man. Um, so yeah, because Matt Gargan wanted to eat people. And I'm like, okay, so maybe it's more symbiote than Dylan in those scenes. But uh, but overall, I still had a blast reading this. And and her teaming up with you know, Venom was fun because Moon Knight, who's kind of a solo act, but not really because of his you know condition and stuff, um, I thought that would have been more of a troubling... Uh, you know, team up with her and it wasn't like they, they, you know, there was a little awkwardness at times, not a lot of chit chat, but he still was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help you with this and, and also help the people in my neighborhood because this is the neighborhood I protect. And also there's vampires here. And she's like, wait, what? There's vampires? So that's part of the immortality thing. Like, all right, let's take some vampire DNA. And that's what the robots were after some of them. So, um, so yeah, but the, the Wolverine battle or the team up that was, wasn't so bad because they actually teamed up before. So Venom was the one that was the real rough team up for her. And I kind of like that. I'm like, oh, so Dylan, he's not a team player. He's used to just doing things by himself, um, you know, for the most part. And he, you know, his dad's gone. So he's got a little chip on his shoulder and he's just trying to do what he can in New York um, with these abilities and with this symbiote. So I, I do like that. And I thought that them two being like the, the more difficult team up was made this more fun um, because they're both kids. And then she starts realizing she's like, he, okay, he does not sound like an adult. He did at the beginning, he sounded like the Venom I've heard about, but now he doesn't. And and as they find the guy who built the robots and he's injecting himself with the immortality drug, um, that's when she starts realizing, okay, this is not Eddie. Uh, so, you know, as the guy injects himself, he's like, hey, my terminal illness is gone. And that's what he promised me. And, and they're like, well, tell us who he is so we can find him. And he's like, no, I'm not telling you anything. He gave me what I wanted. I owe him I'm not going to say anything. And then that's right around that time he starts mutating. Uh, so the serum didn't work. It wasn't perfected because they didn't get enough DNA from certain things on the Krakoa tree um, with the mutants and stuff. Like he was trying to burrow deep down and find the regeneration pods, hoping that he could, you know, learn something. The robots can scan something from those and they can figure out how to reanimate, you know, people like the mutants do. Um, which is currently happening in the comics, which I hate so much because then what are the stakes? You die and you come right back. Who cares? Uh, so yeah, just whatever. <laughs> so, so anyway, so they're fighting this giant mutant guy now and, uh, and he mutates so much every time they punch him, he gets bigger and bigger and then eventually he just explodes. And so uh, Venom is sensing that a piece of a symbiote is being used as part of the serum and there's still a piece somewhere near the building so Miss Marvel looks at a camera nearby and sees that it could be something. She's like, wait a minute, this is like a short range camera or whatever. Like maybe it's somewhere near. And then Venom looks down at the ground and he senses his suit. And he's like, all right, there's a sliver way down below us in the basement. Let's go down there. So they burrow their way down into the basement to go find the rest of his suit. And that's where they come across, you know, the villain. And he's talking to a doctor and he's like, you know, get my serum made, uh, we need to figure out this immortality thing. And they're like, no, we're going to need more bugs to go out. And he's like, well, we can't because the guy just died, you know, another failure. But uh, we're going to we're gonna perfect this. And he's trying to keep morale up, I think, with his group. And it doesn't really work because one of the scientists ends up turning against him when the heroes show up. And you get all of them, Venom, Wolverine, Moon Knight, and Miss Marvel. 
all teaming up. Uh, so what a weird Fantastic Four group, right? Um, they're more like the Frightful Four in a way, except Miss Marvel's so nice. Uh, so, so anyway, they come in and they take down some of the other experiments. Then they find a cure for the experiments and they save the day at the end. Uh, but the bad guy does get away. Uh, but And then there's a really cool moment right at the end where Miss Marvel gets to go talk to Venom. And she says, look, I know you're not Eddie, but whoever you are and whoever Eddie was to you, I think he would be proud because you you said you weren't a team player, but you came through today and you helped save a lot of lives. And, he, you know, and Dylan's kind of like, OK, yeah, I hope he's proud of me. Um, and then he kind of walks off. So I was like, OK, there you go. Like, it was a nice little Dylan Brock story, you know, as Venom. And again, I'm not really fully on board with that idea, but I haven't really read, to be fair, the new books yet. So I will get into those soon and I will try to reach out to Eddie's mullet. I was going to reach out to him maybe tomorrow um, or today while this is going up. Um, I'll try to reach out to him and see if we can record and maybe we can record um, like a co-review of the first two trade paperbacks and make them two separate episodes. And then if we can squeeze in a Carnage one, we can do the first trade paperback of the current Carnage series. So that way we'll be completely caught up with all the symbiote stuff, um, except for Savage Avengers, which I will find a way to dive into that at some point and catch up with what's going on with Flash Thompson. But I want to catch up with the other, the main book first, before we get into, you know, the dark web stuff that'll be happening later this year. So uh, yeah, the, but anyway, I would say if you're out there, I don't know if they're going to release this as a trade, um, but the three issues that are out, if you can still go get them, this was fun. I just thought it was fun and it, it was a character that I don't know a ton about. And I think Jody has a really good handle on the kind of the, the fun uh, and responsible uh, character that Miss Marvel seems to be. And it made me enjoy the read. You know, I was like, oh, cool. You're putting this type of personality where she's kind of goofy and a young teenager. and But she's focused. And you have her against these gruff, you know, male characters, like teaming up, like buddy cop style. And I, I was like, yeah, I kind of am on board with that. It was done really, really well. So those are my thoughts on this. Let me know if you have different or same thoughts down below in the comments. If you read this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And we'll continue talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace. Thank you.